All right, in this last video of the unit, we're going to be talking about some proportionality theorems. So the first one, the triangle proportionality theorem, says, and this is on your proof cards, that if a line is parallel to one side of the triangle, so we have if TU is parallel to QS, then it divides the two sides proportionally. And we're talking about these sides. So RT over TQ, that would be equi equivalent to RU, this part, over US. And I'm going to do a small, al it's kind of like an algebraic proof of that if you're interested in that after this next theorem. Um, if you're not interested in that, you can skip over that part of the video. The converse of that then is we would just switch the if and the then. So if I know that this over this is equal to RU over US, so if I know those sides are proportional, then I would know these two lines are parallel. So this converse is another way to show that lines are parallel. Okay? Whereas the first one is a way to show that sides are proportional. So here's how we're going to do this. All right, so if I am given, remember the premise of that first theorem was that this side and this side are parallel. So BC is parallel to DE. If that is the case, then I know by cap, corresponding angles theorem, that these would be congruent. Now notice that I'm marking them with different ones. I'm not saying this is necessarily isosceles, but those would be congruent. So what I want you to think about then is I've got that smaller triangle on top, ABC, and then I have the larger triangle, the whole triangle, ADE. If I know those two angles are congruent, then I know those two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. All right, so having said that, if I know that they're similar, all of their sides can be shown as proportional. So that's where I'm starting up here. So I'm saying that AB is over AD, so I'm doing that side over that side, I'm making a proportion out of that, is equal to AC, over AE. All right, so that's what that first proportion, that's where that's coming from. So we're going to do a little algebraic manipulation here. Again, this is just to show you why this is true. Um, you don't have to know how to do this or anything like that. I'm just showing you why. So I'm showing you how to go from similar triangles to just these pieces of the theorem that are proportional. So what I'm going to do is notice that I have my my bottom segments, AD. So I'm splitting AD up using the segment addition postulate into AB plus BD. So that's what that is. So AD is the same thing as AB plus BD. And then AE is the same thing as AC plus CE. Okay, so that's just using the segment addition postulate. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse, I'm going to do the reciprocal property of proportions and put my denominators in the numerator and vice versa. Okay, so I did the reciprocals. The reason I want to do that is because now I can split up my fraction. So instead of having one single fraction like this, I'm going to put this over my denominator and this over my denominator in two separate fractions. So you can see how that where those two separate fractions come along. Same thing over here on the right hand side. So these are the two separate fractions if I split those up. And why would I want to do that? Well, look at what I have here. I have AB over AB. What is that? That's just the same thing as 1, right? So this is the same thing as 1. And then AC over AC, that's just the same thing as 1. So I have one on both sides of the equation that I can subtract. And then now I just have BD, so I have these left. BD over AB is equal to CE over AC. So what did I just show you? I showed you why if I have this 
parallel lines in a triangle, I'm showing you why this piece of that side, the BD over AB, is going to be the same proportion as CE over AC. Okay, so that's just because of those two similar triangles. All right, so moving on. So how do we use these theorems? Well, I can figure out what the length of y axis is. So I'm trying to figure out how big that is. And notice that I'm given uw, so I really need to know what um, vw is. So just subtract 3, and that will be 15. OK, so I've got my parallel lines. That's what I need in order to write a proportion. So I can say 3 over 15 is going to be the same as yx over 16. So I can do 15 times yx is equal to 16 times 3. So that'll be 48. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 15. And it's OK if you don't get a whole number. I got 3.2. Or if you wanted to keep it as a As a fraction, it would be that. So 3.2 is the decimal or 16 fifths. All right, so there you go. So we can use that theorem to help us do that. Another theorem that we have, which is also on your proof cards, I call it um, the three parallel lines proportion theorem. All right, obviously it doesn't have a name for it, so just call it what you need to call it. But here, I, I like to call it three parallel lines because then it tells you what do you need to start with. So we're starting with three parallel lines. And then they intersect two transversals. So my transversals are L and M. Okay, so that's important. So all that's saying then is if I have this situation, then UW, so this is my UW, UW over WY, okay, so I'm taking that part over that part, is going to be the same as vx, that's this part, over xz, which is that part. Okay, so we're just making proportions out of those parallel lines. So the three parallel lines create two chunks, right? So or four chunks total, but two chunks on each transversal. And those chunks will be proportional. The other one is the um, angle bisector triangle proportional theorem. All right, so yeah, I know it's a long name, but this doesn't have a name either. So again, if I start with an angle bisector, and it has to be within a triangle. Okay, so if I have a triangle and then an angle bisector of one of those angles, then it's going to cut that opposite side, okay, this side, AD over DB. So you see how that cuts it in the two different sides. Remember, these will not necessarily be equal, and I keep telling you that just because this is an angle bisector doesn't mean that that opposite side is bisected. So be careful with that. So, um, but it is proportional. So AD over DB is going to be the same as this whole side, CA, over this whole side, CB. So it's kind of like cutting the triangle into proportional halves. All right, they're not congruent, but they are proportional. Okay, so another situation where we can make a proportion out of the items from our diagram. So let's use this one. So we have a triangle, and notice that we're given an angle bisector here. So N is bisected, and we know that because these angles are congruent. So that means that this side across is going to be proportional, X plus 1 over 4x minus 5, that's going to be the same proportion or same ratio as the sides. So the x plus 1 side, that goes with the 10. And then the 4x minus 5y on that half, or I'm going to say half, but it's not exactly half, of the triangle is 25. So then all we have to do is cross multiply. Make sure you distribute. You don't want to get this problem wrong just because you were doing your algebra incorrectly. And then solve for your x. So 
So we've got 15x. I'm going to add that 50 to the other side to get 75. And then I'm going to divide the 75 by the 15. And I get x equals 5. So always when you get x, what are we trying to find? We're not trying to find x, we're trying to find wo. So make sure to plug this back in to the x for wo. So I'm going to do 4 times 5 minus 5. So that's going to be 20 minus 5, which is 15. So wo is 15 units. All right, so those are our proportionality theorems. Now I want to talk about the relationship between perimeter and area. We've already been working with perimeter quite a bit with our ratios. So let's say, okay, we have two polygons that are similar. And here I've got triangles, so you can see I've got angle-angle going on. So I know that those sides are proportional. So what about their perimeter? Well, if I add all of the numbers up here, the perimeter, oh, let me label this better, the perimeter P is going to be 9 plus 12 plus 15. So here I'm going to get... Let's see, that would be 27 plus 9, and that would be 36. And then here, the perimeter is going to be 6 plus 8 plus 10. So it will be 14 plus 10 is 24. So what I want to do is, how does this relate to their scale factor or to their ratio? Right. So if I take the smallest side and compare it to that smallest side, that scale factor, I'm going to abbreviate with SF, is from small to big, 6 over 9, which reduces to 2 thirds. So this one is 2 thirds of the size of that one. Now let's compare their perimeters. So I'm going to do small perimeter compared to the large perimeter, 24 over 36. If I divide each of those by 12, then I'm going to get 2 thirds again. So notice that the ratio between their perimeters is exactly the same as the scale factor. All right, so now let's do area. So on this first one, area, remember, is one-half base times height. So this will be my base. This will be my height. So one-half, 12 times 9. So that's going to give me 6 times 9 will be 54 units squared. And then I'm going to do the area over here. So this is my basis of my height. So 1 half, 8 times 6. So that's 4 times 6, which is 24. So again, these are the same triangles. So my scale factor is still 2 thirds. But now if I do my ratio of my areas, small to big, so that's 24 over 54. Let's see, I can reduce them by 2. So that'll be 12 over 27. Hmm. So what in the heck is going on there? Can I do it? Yeah, I can do some more. So let's do some more because those can be reduced by 3. So I can really reduce that a little bit more. There we go, 4 ninths. So that looks a little better. But that's still not the same as 2 thirds. But if you think about what is the relationship between those two fractions, two-thirds versus four-ninths. Well, here's what I want you to write down. All right, and again, write what makes sense to you. Sometimes, sometimes this looks overwhelming, but this works for any polygons that are similar. Okay, so similar figures. All right, so if I'm doing just a side length, over a side length of any polygon that are that are uh, similar, then I'm going to get the scale factor, right? So this is my scale factor, a to b. Scale factor measures linear linear lengths. It compares the linear lengths, so one side compared to the other. And we just showed that if we do the perimeter of that polygon, then so the perimeter is going to be the same as the scale factor. Okay, so if I added all of them up, so here's, here's an example of just adding up all the sides. Again, you don't need to write all of that, but if that helps you remember what perimeter means, then go ahead and write that. And then area. 
area we said was different. When we do the area of that, of the polygons, then it's going to be A squared over B squared. So in our example before, our scale factor was two-thirds, but our areas was four-ninths. So I don't know if you came up with this before I told you, but if I were to square this, so square my numerator, square my denominator, I would get 4 over 9. Okay, so if you know your scale factor, then in order to know the ratio of your areas, then you have to square your scale factor. So knowing that, let's do an example with some figures that are, have very limited information. So we have the corresponding lengths of these similar figures. So first of all, they're telling us that they're similar. And we need to find the ratios of shaded to unshaded. So we're always doing small to big here in these situations, shaded to unshaded, of the perimeters and of the areas. So first, what do they give us? They give us the side lengths. Remember, side lengths tell us the scale factor. So from shaded to unshaded, this scale factor is two-fifths. Now, we know that the perimeter ratio is going to be the same as the scale factor. So that's also going to be two-fifths. But then they said find the ratio of the areas. So for the areas, that's going to be... 2 squared over 5 squared, which is 4 25ths. Okay, so those are all of our ratios. And then the last thing they want us to do is find the unknown area. So they told us that the area of the small one is 2 feet squared. So we need to find the area of this big one. All right, so we're going to set up a proportion. We know the ratio of the areas is 4 over 25. So we're going to use that ratio. And we know that the smaller area is 2 feet squared, so that's going to go in the numerator. And I don't know what the big one is, so that's what I'm solving for. So cross multiply, 4x equals 50. And then divide by 4. So that'll be x equals 12.5. Yeah. All right, so the big area is 12.5 feet squared. So you can see how we use these ratios to help us find the area of that. And we didn't even know, like, the, the length we knew the, or the width. We didn't know the other dimension. So this is another way to, to find um, missing pieces without knowing all the information, without doing it the standard, just plug it into the formula way. All right, so let's do the same thing with these trapezoids. Okay, trapezoids. They gave us the linear measurements, 14 over 20. So the scale factor, let's reduce that. So that'll be 7 tenths. So then we know the perimeters also going to have the same ratio. Now the areas are going to be 7 squared over 10 squared. So that's going to be 49 over 100. So those are the first part. Now if we want to find... The missing area, notice here, we are given the big area, so we need to find the small area. So when I'm doing my ratio of 49 over 100, I need to make sure to put the 400 inches squared down here with the bigger part of my ratio. And then up here, this is what I don't know, the smaller part of the ratio. So cross multiply, 100x equals... I'm going to have to get my calculator out, 49 times 400, just to speed this up. So that would be 19,600, and then divide by the 100, and then I get 196. All right, so that would be in inches squared. So the area of that smaller trapezoid is 196 inches squared. So that's how you can use those ratios to your advantage.